We're in Lao, baby! Woohoo! Good morning, folks. Hope you are doing well today. We are currently in Van Vieng and we are going to explore the region by electric bike today. We have previously cycled around on a normal push bike, but we're going a bit more adventurous today and we're going to do the electric bike. Lupe has kindly developed an itinerary, which I will show you on the map here now. So we're going to visit some of the Blue Lagoons and we're going to try and reach the summit of Nam Chai viewpoint. It's about, I believe, 450 meters up. It's very steep but it's meant to be one of the most amazing viewpoints here in Van Vieng. We managed to reach the other summit at Pa and Gurn viewpoint. I hope you can come along for the journey. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, do give it a like. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And yeah, let's do it. So the cost to rent an electric bike here in Van Vieng is about eight euros, so something like 150,000 kit. This is gonna be really cool. Helmet is on, looking good. So we're getting used to these electric bikes now and I have to say they're not the easiest thing to, to drive if you're doing it for the first time. There's a bit of a difference with a bike. The weight, the accelerator as well is obviously a little bit different to that of a bike, but uh, it's fun, we're getting used to it. So Lupe, what do you think of the bike so far? It's good, it's my first time riding a bike. And is it easy to drive? It's possible, yeah. It's not for us. Not for us. So, so far so good. We're getting through the roads here fairly quick on the electric bikes as you can imagine they're eating up the road. I think the max speed of this one is something like 45 kilometers an hour. We are taking it handy, don't get me wrong, we're not going fast here. Parts of the roads you can see probably there's lots of potholes. It's a lot of fun. I think our first stop will be a Blue Lagoon, but we'll keep going. So after stopping here outside some sort of site i'm not really sure exactly what it is but we're after seeing our first wild snake in a long time i think the last time we saw one was in kausok national park but it's slithering around over there but yeah it's just kind of ooh, i want to get away from it as quick as possible to be honest and we are here at the blue lagoon it is kind of more emerald to be honest than blue but that changes i suppose with the amount of rain that falls but you can see there it is, it looks absolutely beautiful, especially with that backdrop as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting in. It is roasting hot, we're gonna find a spot and we'll do a bit of a dip and cool down basically. So it is very beautiful here. You can probably hear the water now. There's a bit of a waterfall there. Waterfall, I say, it's very minor. The surroundings around here is incredible. The last probably 15 minutes of that bike ride here was just unbelievable. The only the odd person would pass you on a bike, on an electric bike or motorbike and it's just, it's like you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're just able to enjoy peace and quiet for the time being. Yeah, we're really falling in love with Lao and Van Vieng especially. Okay, in fairness, this lagoon is very blue. You can kind of see through it as well, it's very clear, which means it's very clean. So definitely going to have a swim here and enjoy it. I don't know, it looks amazing. <laughs> Blue Lagoon 2, which is where we are now, looks way better than the first one. The first one is still nice, and as I said before, we visited yesterday, but this is more clear today, very clean. There's a lot more things to do. It's a bigger space, really. What's your preference? I would nearly probably go with this one, to be honest. There's a lot of people after arriving now, plenty of Europeans here as well. So they're all just having fun in the pool, doing the dives off the board. There's another lagoon just a little bit further up, so we're probably going to go and explore that one shortly. It's beautiful here. So the beauty about this region is there's so many caves, viewpoints, lagoons, all in the one area. It's just handy because the road, you can do basically a big circle, almost like a loop, you could say, from Van Vieng. Start in Van Vieng and head out along the road. I think it's like 36 kilometers in total, the one we're doing. It really makes things easy. The electric bike, lads, I can't get over the electric bike. It's just so much fun and it makes life so much easier. You have all your energy for actually being at the lagoon or getting up to the viewpoint, which can take a lot out of you. Definitely, I recommend getting the electric bike. Another really nice little feature is these little areas here. They are situated like around all the lagoons we've been to so far and you can just sit there with your friends and family, have some food, take some time away from the sun because you're in Southeast Asia here and it gets really, really hot, obviously. Even now it's beating down on us and it's so hot in the skin. It's it's really beautiful here. It's, it's taken care of very well. Like there's a lot of plants and flowers and all that sort of thing growing around us. It really is, it's a paradise here. 
So next stop is Blue Lagoon 6, getting some respite from the hot weather here, just doing more of the same. So definitely getting a little bit more confident on these electric bikes. It takes a little bit of getting used to it, but when, once you get them, it's so much fun and I can't believe how we survived without them before, to be honest. And look behind me, look at that view. Unbelievable. It's pretty peaceful here. It's amazing. Sometimes you just have to stop on the side of the road and look out in front of you and see what's there and it's amazing. We're in Lao, baby! So we're here now in Blue Lagoon number six, I think this is. And if you look around behind me, you can kind of see there's plenty of little buildings that all kind of look abandoned. There is, I see a couple of tourists over there beyond at the lagoon itself, but there's a lot of overgrowth happening around here and pretty much no maintenance whatsoever. It kind of looks abandoned, but we're not in the high season. So I'm only guessing here, but I'd say that's the reason. Heading up to the water here now, looks pretty spectacular. There are a few life jackets around the place which would suggest that tourists still come here around this time. Obviously, like us, is no kind of tour guide around or it doesn't seem like there's anyone in charge. We pretty much just walked in here now and we didn't even have to pay anything, but I can't believe this place. Part of a broken canoe stick, as you can see here. Yeah, there's not much going on, not much maintenance being done. Beer bottles left around on the floor. It's mad because you think we see plenty of tourists at the other lagoons, but here it's just absolutely dead. And this looks like it's going to fall over any second. But the views, oh my god, the views. So we're just out of the water there now and feel refreshed. Cold water is really good for the legs um, after we've done so much kind of walking and hiking in the last couple of days. So you actually feel much better once you get out of it. But definitely this is this is one of the nicer lagoons. And like I was saying before, it's pretty much abandoned. There's, there's little toilets here as well. Doors are broken down. It's kind of just not taken care of anymore. And like I said, there's no one here at all. It's just us two. And then there's another couple of German tourists who are, who are here as well. They arrived on a bike, but that just adds to the, the aura of this place. It's so cool. Behind me there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a couple of zip lines that are completely abandoned as well. It looks like this place before was full of life, full of tourists coming here, but now it's just basically like a ghost town. It's eerie. To be honest, with the way time's going now, not sure if we're going to make Namji viewpoint. Again, not sure how you pronounce it, if that's correct or not, but we might have to leave that tomorrow, but it's okay. We're really enjoying the lagoons here, and there's plenty more to come. There's caves as well. There are just so many things you can do here. You could be here weeks and still not see everything in Van Vieng. You can see the remnants here of a diving board into that pool in front where we were earlier. It's absolutely falling apart. But as we head up here, I think this was a restaurant before. Lupa said it was marked on the map, but there's not much going on. It's absolutely a shame because this has been the coolest lagoon so far for us. Like I said, there's some of these hanging around. I might as well have a chance going up to be honest to see what's up here. At least there's concrete steps. There's no chance of them going through. Pretty much of the same stuff. Wow, not great at all. So you can easily imagine here what it would be like to have your decking, your seats, your restaurant, people eating up here, drinking, having a good time in the depths of the high season to have this view around you is quite something wow so we're taking a break here now we're going to have a bit of food because we're getting really tired i think it's 4 p.m we still haven't eaten our lunch yet so it's turning into a long day Still, I never get sick of the juice. No, pineapple fruit juice, and it is the freshest thing you're gonna get. Oh God, that is good. So we're here at Pau Pankam Cave. We're gonna make the descent up, I think it's 15 minutes, but we're under real pressure 
to get the bikes back by seven o'clock or we're going to be in big trouble. So we're kind of rushing here now. We met a nice lady who worked down there. We couldn't understand her for our lives. And she sent us down like a some sort of track road into the middle of nowhere. So we turned around and came back and we decided we're just going to do this one because we don't know how long we would have been going for. So hopefully it's good. That would have been some disaster. Anyway, back up I go again. Could have done without that to be honest. Forgetting things, trying to race up to the top now before it's too late. Oh, I'm struggling now. Looks like we made it. There's a sign for Tampa Hon Cam Cave. So let's try and get in. Oh wow. That looks like a spider's web. Is it a, something's caught in it, but I don't see any spider. This cave is very narrow, very deep, very dark. So I don't know how, how much we're going to go into it. It's good, it's, you can stand now. Jesus, that was very tight, too tight for me. Lupe's gone in a bit further. I'm not the best with small cramped spaces, so I said I would come out. Well, I probably should be facing some fears here. Maybe I'll try and go in a little bit further and see what happens. big and it's dark. I think I see light at the other end. It's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> I see daylight. Careful. Look at this big opening in the roof. And look at all that rock. Stalic mice or stalic tights. I'm not sure which one it is, but I think they're all down here to be honest. It's amazing, not as bad as I thought. Probably went in about 20 meters or so. And then it opens up to this big hole in the ground and earth. And obviously a lot of light coming in now, so proud of myself that's a win again facing all my fears in this trip so far look at that you can see the water dripping down from the top of the cave and it's creating a, a little micro swimming pool here all the way up to the roof this cave just seems to go on and on forever and i don't know how much more time we're going to have to explore but it's really cool it's big enough probably 10 meters in in height maybe five or six wide and it's really cool. I don't know if you've ever been down to a cave before or how much time you would spend down in a cave, but it's just so calm. You can hear a slight echo and some of the dripping water from the roof. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's an unusual kind of feeling. I think it's maybe it's time we got back out. Wow, glad to be out there, but enjoyable nonetheless. Go in again, face the fear. I did not like small cramped spaces. And those chikaras is what you can hear in the background. They are so loud. It's almost like someone is using a piece of machinery, like a drill or a saw or something. Very cool, very interesting. They're these tiny little, almost like a cockroach, and they like sit on side of a tree and they make this incredible noise and it rings out through the jungle. Wherever you are, you can hear it. So yeah, tomorrow we're gonna to try and do Nam Ji viewpoint. And we simply don't have time today. I'm gonna to ask you to do two things. If you can subscribe to the channel now, that'll be great. It'll do great things for the algorithm and it will push our channel out to other people as well. And if you want to see how we get on climbing the viewpoint tomorrow, watch this video and it should take you there. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Kab chai lai lai. Cheers.